So there's a lot of technology nowadays that has emerged um, when it comes to the security products space, right? Like there's so many different uh, tools out there that not only on the blue team side, but also on the offensive side of security that can automate hunting for vulnerabilities, you know, detecting things and overall just help a security team quite a bit. And, you know, there might be some concern around that, like how good are these products and, you know, is it uh, something that could possibly take away jobs from the cybersecurity space, the offensive security space? Could it possibly replace certain things you do or if not everything that you do as a uh, pen tester? So if that was uh, something you were wondering about, of any concern to you, definitely stay tuned for this video. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is Ryan from Elevate Cyber, and I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, I'm going to quote something that my friend Josh over at Eat Lift Program, uh, check him out on YouTube if you haven't already for any, uh, any needs you might have for learning programming or anything like that. But he, he likes to quote often uh, Moore's Law, and that is that every year technology doubles, essentially, right? Really, Moore's Law is talking about the uh, number of transistors and chips but really, you know, you could extrapolate that to technology as a whole, right? The speed, the efficiency, it's been doubling uh, every, pretty much every year. And so that might bring up the concern of how good is this stuff, especially with the emergence of artificial intelligence and how that's going to, you know, could potentially greatly change the space. You know, you already see a lot of tools on the security side that are implementing uh, AI in various capacities. And you might be wondering, where is the, this bone scanning stuff at now? And where do you really, where do we really see it going in terms of what it can automate or even could it maybe automate us out of a job, right? I know that's a concern that's always in the back of people's minds because a lot of people have been impacted by technology. It's, you know, technology as great as this Moore's Law stuff is and, you know, merging technology like blockchain, right? It is disruptive technology and it can, you know, we've seen it wipe out other industries make them obsolete. And so that might be a, that's a pretty valid concern on the security side. What does that mean? Well, right now I will say for us as pen testers, there's so many, uh, you know, the pen, the uh, vulnerability scanning is by no means a replacement for what we do as pen testers. There's a lot of issues with uh, the vulnerability scanning, even the tooling that uses AI. Okay. AI is also very much in its infancy. And the thing about AI right now is that it requires a human to really work, right? You have to feed in, like, for example, right? If you want to, without getting too in the weeds here, if you want to, there's a certain type of AI where it's just taking in a bunch of data, right? And based off of, uh, you know, it's learning based off that data and, and getting feedback and you have to feed it just millions and millions of pieces of data, right? And you have to go in and tag each piece of data individually so that after it makes its prediction, it can validate whether it was correct or incorrect. And it learns from that. But some physical human has to sit down and tag all this data, right? And that takes a ton of time. And, you know, it's far from a complete solution right now. And, Definitely the commercial tooling that's out there when it comes to vulnerability scanning, there's tons of false positives. It has its own issues for sure. Uh, in fact, the majority of the findings that I've come across through working in the industry uh, with these vulnerability scanning tools is more often than not, uh, it is a false positive. So it requires a security tester, someone with security knowledge to go in and try and reproduce that finding to, to determine if it is a valid finding or if it is a false positive, right? Meaning that it flagged it as a vulnerability, but it's not actually present in case you were unclear on that term. But with that being said, it is a great supplement to any security team because you have a way to speed up some of the process. Sometimes you will find some good stuff through that. And there are certain areas where the automated scanning is more efficient than a human, better than a human, you know? Uh, for example, if you're looking for DOM-based cross-site scripting, that's extremely difficult to find manually 
you have to look through all the source code. You have to have or acquire an inc- an, a pretty uh, intricate knowledge of the JavaScript that you're dealing with, right? And especially if you're on the security side and you didn't actually write that code, that's going to be very cumbersome and it's going to be a very negative ROI, you know, versus all the other vulnerabilities you could have found with all the time you're spending trying to find this DOM-based cross-site scripting. That's where you're better off just relying on a scanner to find something like that. Automation is pretty good at detecting DOM-based cross-site scripting. There's certain vulnerabilities that automation is better at finding than others, most definitely. Uh, So that's another thing to keep in mind. There's a lot of gaps in what it uh, is good at finding and weak at finding, right? Particularly where what it's weak at, right? We said it's strong at DOM-based cross uh, cross site scripting and things like that. Where it's very weak at is detecting access control vulnerabilities. If you look at the uh, a lot of the really high paying bug bounties out there, oftentimes it's uh, access control related findings uh, because automated scanning is really bad at being able to try and replay those those requests and things like that. And it really requires the intuition of a human. And as this industry is always something that's going to be like, you know, hackers are always the guys that really think outside the box. And although AI is kind of filling that need, that use case of thinking outside the box, because it's doing beyond just what the programmer, you know, traditionally you would write some code and the program would do only what the developer told it to do. Now AI is able to quote unquote, have a mind of its own, not really, but it's able to do things beyond just what it was programmed to do necessarily. But with that being said, there's so much kind of background knowledge and contextual knowledge uh, that a security tester brings that I don't see our job as pen testers being automated out anytime soon at all because that's the whole value of having you know people to uh, add as an addition to your security team. You know you do the automated scanning, uh, you automate where you can, but you still need people because you know the human brain, you know we can think contextually, right? We can see, you know, oh, I recognize this and that reminds me of the time that I found this one website that wasn't validating this. And because I'm this level account, what if I try to replay this? You know what I mean? And that's very hard. Even if uh, you apply AI and AI, keep in mind very much in its infancy as well, it's really difficult to really, it's not going to have access to all the information, contextual information that a human has. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. Maybe in some utopia really far out there, we could eventually get there one day, but uh, even still, right? There's so much that uh, people are finding constantly. People are looking, thinking outside the box to find things that never thought, you might never have thought was possible. Uh, because because what hacking really comes down to is just finding creative solutions to to things, right? And it's all about being efficient and, and things like that, right? You can look at certain programmers as hackers, right? They find innovative solutions to problems, and that's something that can never will never be automated away. So let me know what you guys think of this topic down in the section below, and I hope this helped clear up the difference uh, between the volume scanning and actual pen testers and what we do on a day-to-day. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. Hit the like button as well to help get this message out there. And if you're interested on diving right on into the content, maybe uh, learning some some things uh, for OSCP, definitely check out the playlist on screen. And I will see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.